I want to go over something real briefly and um, something I did in the past and um, I think I nailed every one of them right except for one time and it wasn't even that bad uh, is the currencies and you can not invest in the currencies um, and a lot of times what I'll do is um, it's usually one thing that can be said about currencies it's something very simplistic they go up and they go down right now what I'm getting at is this they really don't make big moves against each other for long central banks intervene so I used to well I don't like these as much because I think you make a lot more on the commodities but I remember betting on this Mexican peso getting like six and a half percent in a couple months and then I dumped it and uh, Norwegian Krona was another one the Australian dollar Canadian dollar um, New Zealand Kiwi and uh, sometimes they're pretty short trades sometimes they're longer and you can't make out pretty good on these things sometimes but they're easy to get into because they're uh, stock tickers and um, I do want to point out yeah, I agree mostly with the physical metals, but I do other things. And I know people say people say that's playing. I don't play. I I want to win. You know, so I don't like I don't like, I take this shit serious. That's not a freaking game. I'm like gambling. You know, I want to win, and I usually do. So um. I like to say though is sometimes you know we also we know that the dollar they say is a no brainer um the dollar is going to be devalued thirty three percent forty percent or whatever it might be good to bet against the dollar they got power shares to bet against the dollar I think it's u u p or so I forgot what it was don't quote me on that, but I bet against the dollar back when the dollar the dollar index is pretty high right now i mean it's I think it's going to drop further. I mean, it's it's it has been dropping a little bit, but I think it's going to drop further. But I think the real potential is to really to make money right now is going to be on silver, platinum, and palladium, mainly, mainly, and possibly oil too. But um, you know, sometimes I think other things need to be looked at because right now I'm getting back in a different mindset. Um, I was holding assets for a long time, and I had, I got out of my AGQ, and I was holding PSLV. I figured silver would be a good 50 bucks or so by the end of the year. I don't like that. I don't like the way that came out. But I also want to caution about, um, this is my opinion, but my opinion is not based upon purely, um, gut feeling. Well, for one... Lindsey Williams, I, I mentioned about him. He's getting some good information. He's getting more. He's getting more garbage. So I really can't trust what he says. But um, I, I also went into what Bob Chapman. I know people don't want to hear that. They like listening to this guy. But there's stuff out there that's legit. Like if you look up Finra, his broker check, and all this type of stuff. There's a lot of stuff out there. I'm not going to go through it again. And um, there was SEC halting trading on stuff, you know, he recommended. And uh, Alex Jones seems to have these two guys on his show a lot, which makes me not trust Alex Jones for nothing. Nothing. Because there's so many other gold people out there. I mean, he can get... Um, you know, Mike Maloney or something like that, or, you know, David Morgan, I don't know, one of those people, somebody else, and I think those kind of people want to be on his show, they want the exposure, but I don't think he, I, I suspect he doesn't want to do it, and he's putting these guys on, and you know, when Chapman, just last week, or whatever it was, he says gold is going to go up to $3,200, possibly in February, what kind of ridiculous prediction is that anyway, so, I know they're really, I think they got to, you know, and there's one thing I, I sticks in my mind is when Chapman made a call 
that when silver was near that peak, he said it was going to blast right through and go a lot higher. You know, <laughs> I don't know if that was just a bad call or that was that was something to throw people off. Me, I was just going to wait to the end of the year anyway. So that's what I figure it goes up or goes down. But I didn't want to show any more profit. So that was the deal. I didn't want to show any more profit. So I wasn't doing my normal thing. But uh, I just want to warn some people, you know, people don't want to hear stuff against these Lindsey Williams and Bob Chapman and all this stuff. I'd be very wary. I'd be extremely wary of anything that's on Alex Jones and big time. And um, I want to get into one other thing. And <laughs> this is a fund uh, you don't want to mess with long term. It's very short trading. You know, I went into AGQ. This is ZL, ZSL. I didn't use it much, but I used it some. And I made some money on it. I don't know. I guess that means I was shorting silver. But, you know, the way I look at it, if you short silver and you make money, what's wrong with that? Really? What are you going to be doing? Are you going to drive the price of silver down to zero at the same time you're making money? What does that mean? You're going to make money and then you can buy physical? I mean, what's wrong with that, right? I mean, I don't know. I don't see nothing wrong with it. Um, I actually bought it right in this area when it was, um, this was back in, uh, I think it was late January of 2011. I bought some of this uh, ZSL, you know, the Pro Shares Ultra Short, and I made some money on it. And right about in here, I flipped into, um, I got out of AGQ, and then I started shorting. I started shorting a little bit. I didn't bit short real heavy. But I made money on it. There was a percentage I made. And then I went into PSLV when I was holding. But I think my next plan is um, I'm going to jump in and out of AGQ probably and UCO. But as we see, this is like a backwards curve. You know, this is a fund you don't want to. You, you want to play this to fund more short term. But as I'm backing out of um this is going to be my strategy, and I think this is what a lot of people do. They don't tell you. You're not going to hear Chapman tell you to do this. You're not going to tell your any silver bugs tell you to do this. You're not going to hear you know anybody tell you to do this. I'm going to tell you this. This what I'm going to say is plain pure common sense, and this is how I'm doing it. As I see silver make, I think it's going to make tremendous gains this year. But when I start getting nervous, I'm going to do that same thing sell off in pieces it has a really really good day I'm gonna sell part of it especially after it gets up to a certain point and I'm gonna be watching that silver gold ratio I'm gonna be holding cash in a brokerage account yeah I know about uh, Corazine and all that kind of shit they better not screw up my money I can tell you that right now because I'll get it back two seconds flat I will I will I'll get it back and um, when I see this pullback, you know what they're going to do. They're going to do it on a Friday. They're going to do it on a weekend. You know, and silver's going to drop like 20 bucks in a day. Well, you know what? I'm going to get in on the tail end of that crap. And I'm going to short silver with Z ZSL. And that's what I should have done with this other stuff, too. But like I said, I was playing a little bit different because I didn't want to show any more profit. Because every time you make a trade, you're you recognizing gains and stuff, right? I didn't want to show any more profit. So this next time is a new year. And uh, I don't care, you know. I don't care what the hell I got to pay, you know. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and as if... Uh, as, as I see it gets up to a certain point, that silver to gold ratio is looking low. Really good day. Silver already had a good gain. Maybe it's at the all-time high so far. Start selling off. And if they, they pull this crap again, which I think they will, I mean, it's sort of like the sun rises in the morning, right? You know they're going to crash it. Conspiracy or not, I don't care. I want to make money. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to short it on the way down for whatever piece I can catch. And I did catch this a couple of times. I did short it a couple of times, and I made some money on it. 
And I see there's nothing wrong with doing that. And you know, if you really know what the hell's going on in the movements of silver, I don't know why you're not playing paper markets. You know, buying on the dips, it don't make any sense to me. It doesn't make any sense. You know, I mean, yeah, I bought on the dips too, and I still buy on the dips. But you need, this should be done. If you really know the price of silver, which way it's going, you can make so much damn money. It's ridiculous. Now, obviously, I don't know which way it's going. I'm using my common sense. But that's the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to sell in steps when it gets up to a certain point, And that silver-gold ratio is at a certain point. And I'm going to start holding back that cash. And I probably, you know, the average guy is not going to get no when they're going to pull the next stunt and crash the hell out of silver. But, you know, I figure it's going to go to about 75 to 90 dollars this year that's what i think okay some i may be over bullish on silver and i'll be selling pieces before that but when they crash it down see it was up to 80 dollars they're going to crash it down to like 47 and uh probably the first day you know probably happen over i would guess this is how it's going to play out the first day it might go down 20 bucks or some crazy thing like that and that's going to be on a weekend that's what I'll be playing this fund. And usually I get it right. I mean, actually, somebody, no brainer right now, if you didn't even know what to do with your money, you should be shorting the dollar right now. That's what I think. I think the term, the long term trend this year for the dollar, you still make some money right there. But um, since the new year, I'm not, I'm not really concerned about, uh, you know, how much profit I'm going to be taking and all this kind of stuff. So, uh, you know, it's a whole new slate. So, uh, I'm going to short silver. And I did before a few times. And I'm going to do it again. I'm going to make some money on it. And uh, sometimes these currencies aren't bad to do, too. I mean, especially if, you know, you know, peso. I did the peso. I mean, I got a pretty fast gain on it. So, Norwegian Krona. The, um, the Kiwi in New Zealand and sometimes they make pretty good moves but usually the only way I can judge a currency is if it makes a it's like at a record move already you might want to bet the other way I usually use it that simple and I sit and I wait I mean it's a hell of a lot better than any bank interest ever was that's the way I look at it and that's what I'll take but I think you see, you could make some serious gains on the metals. I think the metals, you're going to get up to like 300% uh, this year if you're playing it right. If you're playing it right. And that's what I'm looking to do. So, uh, you know, don't be afraid to go into these electronic markets. You know, these guys, if everything crashed and we had to go walk around with silver and gold in our pockets, <laughs> these would be like riots on the street and... Uh, bloodshed everywhere you know you're gonna have to, you're gonna need a lot more than a freaking some coins in your pocket believe me so uh, but I think also it's the main thing I'm talking about too is watch these guys advice I, I don't I really you know I never paid attention much to Alex Jones that much I don't really listen to him too much um I got interested in Bob Chapman when I kind of first heard him I listened to him about 10 times, and I was like, I didn't want to listen to him anymore because he basically said, telling me the same crap. But then I looked at some of his calls. I said, man, this guy is so far off. But then I started finding out about his background. But then I started saying to myself, Alex Jones, how the hell do you not know this stuff? And why do you have this guy on here instead of some other guy that's into silver and gold? Which makes me suspect that whole group, the whole group, all of them, all of them. I'm in this crap to win, so I'm going to tell you what I'm doing, and uh, basically it's free advice. You know, it might not be good advice, but I'm in it to win. I'm not here to sell a newsletter. I'm not here to get some accounts. I'm in it to win, and uh, I think you can beat the you can beat the odds. I know you can. I know you can. And since I got a small channel, I'll say what I'm doing. You know, it's kind of stupid if you have like a bunch of people on this stupid thing. What happens is you 
you're telling a lot of people, but if you're telling them the truth, you're screwing it up. You're screwing it up because then the word gets out. But like I said, beware the crap that goes on with Alex Jones' show. I don't like that show. Tell you the truth, that's my personal opinion. You know, I know the mainstream media doesn't like it because it gets into all the conspiracies. But I think he's misleading people even when he's in alternative media. I don't, I don't know what the deal is with that guy. And just some of the stuff he's got on here, I'm like, he is really misleading people a lot. That's what I think. That's my opinion. And um, also, I want to say, these people that are totally, totally into all physical silver, I don't know. I mean, what do you expect to do? You know what's going to happen? They're going to come out with an electronic chip. They're going to stick it in your forehead, and you're going to cash your silver in for that. That's what you're going to do, right? So tell me another one. So, I mean, I don't think... Um, playing these markets is such a stupid idea and you know if they rip me off I'm gonna get my money one way or the other they're not gonna rip me off I'm not worried about it I'm gonna get my money one way or another they're not gonna rip me off and I'm not gonna lose at this game either because when I take it serious I win you know when I sit back and I just let it ride that's where things still stay flat and now that's, you know, some of that stuff's pissing me off because, you know, I listened to this uh, Lindsey Williams. And now that I'm realizing that, you know, the end date he said for 150 to $200 barrel oil was October 2011. Well, it's it's February 2012. It's below 100. So um, I don't think he's the bad guy, but that whole thing was a setup all the way. And... Um, you know, we know what's going to happen as far as, like, you know, with silver. It's going to be a slow ride up, slow bumpy ride up, hard crash down. So, like I said, the way to beat the system, system is to do it in steps. And watch that silver-gold ratio. I'm repeating myself, but it's very, very important. Watch that silver-gold ratio. Do it in steps. And you're going to hear these pundits out there telling you silver is going to $500 an ounce next week, right? Or whatever. And uh, when it crashes, you keep your reserves on the side. And hopefully you can catch the end of the crash with the ZSL. And I did use this a couple of times. I was scared to use this fund, but it worked. I made money on it. I didn't bet a lot, but I made money. It was fast, in and out. Made the money. It was just in there a few days. But a guy, I Gain, got some gains and that's what I'll do and that's what you got to do you got to look at this stuff all the time but let not let any emotions get at you you got to look at it like a stoic and um, that, I'm not too bad at this stuff to tell you the truth you know some of these idiots I was working for um, they'd be close to a billion dollars right now if they listened to me but they did too bad <laughs>